And uh, today we're going to have a talk uh, of Chinyan John about the symplectic stochastic models. Let's start. Okay. So I would like to thank Dan and uh, Slava for the invitation and thank you everyone for coming. Uh, so the topic for my talk today uh, is about a new type of solvable lattice model, which is called stochastic symplectic ice. It has two features. The one feature is that it has a U-turn boundary, and the other feature is that it's a stochastic vertex model. I will detail. So here is an outline of my talk today. I will start from the uncolored stochastic symplectic ice, and after introducing the model briefly, I will talk about the solvability of this model. Uh, namely, I will introduce four sets of young backs equations. And after that, I'll use the young backs equations to derive functional equations for the partition function under some change of parameters. And uh, after that, I will further introduce a model called the colored stochastic symplectic ice model which is obtained by, uh, uh, by assigning colors to each minus spin in the uncolored model. And, uh, and after that, I will also introduce young backs equations for the colored model. And for the colored model, uh, we will derive recursive relations for the partition functions based on those young backs equations. Okay, let me start from the uncolored model. So let me introduce a bit about the motivation of studying this problem of stochastic symplectic ice. Uh, so the name comes from a work by Dmitry Ivanov on symplectic ice, which uh, is related to Cartan type C. Uh, to be more specifically, uh, it is a vertex model with a U-turn right boundary. So, uh, so, there are each, so each two lines are connected with a U-turn boundary on the right. And uh, the partition function of Ivanov's paper is uh, about representing the product of a deformation of Wiles denominator and uh, an irreducible character of the symplectic group. So this is a general generalization of uh, Tokuyama's formula, uh, lattice model interpretation of Tokuyama's formula in the symplectic case. And another source of motivation for this work comes from the subject of integrable probability. Uh, just as one example, uh, in integrable probability, uh, there is a model called a stochastic six vertex model, as Amor has already introduced in our previous lectures. Uh, and those models are related to Cartan type A. Namely, uh, it's usually related to a summation uh, over, so over the symmetric group. Uh, and uh, so those models are, are uh, obtained with stochastic weights. Uh, so with the, the, the benefits of those stochastic weights uh, is that these lattice models can be given some probability interpretation. And uh, so one probability interpretation as an interacting particle system, and then we can define height function and study various uh, probability questions related to those particle systems like fluctuations or laws of large numbers and so on. So a natural question would be, uh, for other Cartan types, is there also a stochastic vertex model that help us to give a probabilistic interpretation? So if such models can be introduced, then we can do some similar probability questions on such models. And uh, uh, this work is an attempt to answer this question. Uh, so uh, specifically, we will present a stochastic vertex model with a U-turn right boundary. So that's uh, related to Cartan type C. And then we also have a probability interpretation. And here is a preprint uh, of the paper on this work. And if you are interested, you can look at the archive link. So let me start from introducing the model. So the, uh, apart from the U-turns, uh, the model uh, is on a rectangular lattice that's similar to stochastic six vertex models. But here we have an even number of rows. Say we have two n rows and l columns. And uh, so in my notation, I will uh, number the columns from right to left and the number the rows from bottom to top. I will give an example in the next slide. And uh, as usual, each edge, each edge should carry a plus spin or a minus spin. And uh, so the difference from uh, in the rectangular lattice from the stochastic sixth vertex model is that uh, two types of vertices are involved in this model. 
uh, which I term uh, as stochastic gamma i's and stochastic delta i's. So for gamma, it, uh, it occupies even number of the rows, and for delta, it occupies all of the number of the rows. Uh, so the, the idea is that for stochastic gamma i's, we want uh, the idea is to uh, the stochastic stochasticity uh, propagates uh, rightward, but on the delta on the delta i's, uh, the stochasticity pro uh, propagates leftward. I will explain it uh, more clearly later. And uh, the Boltzmann weights. So for each vertex, there will be a Boltzmann weight depending on its four adjacent edges, and that will depend on a parameter called the spectral parameter. And uh, the spectral parameter depends in my model depends on rows. So for ice row of stochastic gamma and delta ice, the spectral parameter will both be denoted by the i. And uh, so the most important part is that uh, the ice rows of these ices are connected by a cap on the right. Uh, so let me give you a little example on the lattice setup. So here we see that the columns are numbered from right to left and the rows are numbered from bottom to top. So we have an even number of rows. And uh, so the rows alternates with uh, delta gamma, delta gamma here, and the uh, spectral parameters depends on rows, so it's Z1 up to Z2. And uh, we see that there is a U-turn boundary on the right. So the U-turn boundary, uh, for, uh, for, uh, also called the cap, means that uh, uh, there are some bottom weights uh, that depends on these two, uh, these two boundaries for each cap. I will introduce the bottom weights also. And the model should also depend on some boundary data. And so the main boundary setup uh, will depend on a partition, which is, uh, which is, which is a sequence of numbers uh, that's uh, non-increasing. Uh, and uh, so given the, this partition, we can give uh, the boundary setup in that we assign plus things to the top boundary and uh, uh, introduce minus spin to the bottom boundary uh, for columns that are labeled uh, from lambda i plus m plus one minus i, and the rest of the columns will be assigned a plus spin. And on the left, for each row of stochastic gamma i's, we will assign the minus spin, and for each row of stochastic delta i's, we will assign the plus spin. So now is a more detailed draw of the picture of the example that are given before. So here we see that the, the left boundary, we have minus plus, minus plus, and on the top, these are all plus. And on the bottom, it depends on the partition lambda. Since lambda is two, one, uh, the minus spins occupy the position of two and four here. Okay, so now I can introduce the both my weights for this lattice model. So we have already seen that the rows alternate with stochastic gamma i's and delta i's. So we can first introduce the stochastic gamma i's, which is similar, uh, a bit similar to the stochastic six vertex model case in that we are moving uh, rightward. So uh, for each uh, vertex, we view the input as the left edge and the top edge. So given this input, we want to uh, sample from uh, sample and output uh, the output are the remaining two edges. So it's the right edge and the bottom edge. Uh, we note that these weights are actually stochastic because uh, if we are given plus plus here uh, with probability one, we will get a plus plus and similar for the two minus here. And another example is B1 and C2. So if we are given minus plus uh, on the top and the left, then uh, the summation of the, pro of the weights uh, for these two uh, for these two outputs uh, equals one. So this means that the weights are stochastic. And uh, I mean, moving rightward in that the input is from the left and output is to the right. And uh, another uh, type is stochastic delta i's. Uh, so it's different from the previous case in that uh, we are moving leftward. So now the input will be the right edge and the top edge. Uh, but the output will be the remaining two, so it's left and the bottom. And so we see that from this perspective, the weights are still stochastic uh, because say we have minus minus on for, as input, then we have to get a minus minus, minus with the probability one. And if we have minus plus here, so there are two types of weights uh, for with minus plus as input 
And we can see that the output is either minus plus or plus minus, and they also sum up to one. Here, uh, there is a parameter called the i prime, which is related to the previous parameter z i as q plus one minus one over z i. And I will uh, explain, uh, so the choice of the dependence of the i prime on z i is mainly to ensure integrability. So uh, I want to remark that for uh, for a symplectic ice model and my model, uh, uh, in addition to the young Pax equation, several other relations are needed to, uh, to ensure integrability. So this choice is used to ensure a, a so-called caduceus relation, uh, which I will tell you later. And now I can introduce a Boltzmann weights for the caps. So, uh, there are actually two, two types of cap weights, and these are both stochastic. So when viewing the caps, uh, we view the, uh, top, uh, the top boundary as the input and the bottom boundary as the output. So we see that there are two cases. Here, first we have reflecting case, and another one would be absorbing and emitting case. For the reflecting case, uh, given a plus spin, it has to output a plus spin. And uh, given a minus spin, it also has to uh, output a minus spin. So this uh, is actually deterministic. And for absorbing and emitting case of given plus spin, the, uh, the spin will be changed to the minus after going through the cap. And a given minus, it will be changed to plus. So these names are actually related to the particle system interpretation of the models that I will detail later. So uh, this model can also be given a pass interpretation in that we can just uh, view the minus spins in the model as a collection of paths. And so the, uh, from our Boltzmann weights, since we're moving rightward and leftward, so the paths will also move rightward or downward on stochastic gamma i's and then move leftward or downward on stochastic delta i's. So let me show you an example on our example, on our previous one. So uh, this corresponds to the reflecting case. We see that there are two paths here. So I will focus on this path. So we see that the path uh, moves rightward on this row of gamma i's, so it has gamma i's, and it is reflected by the boundary. So it bends uh, to the left around, around this cap. And then on the at stochastic delta vertex layer, it will move leftward. And then it goes down and moves leftward again on a delta ice layer, and then it leaves the domain. So another case is the absorbing and emitting case. So in this case, uh, when a pass will meet the cap, it will be absorbed. So we see that here is a pass that got, get, that got absorbed by the cap here. And so there is no pass uh, uh, outputting from here. And, uh, but if there is no path that meets the cap in a row of stochastic gamma i's, say we see that in this example, this path doesn't meet the cap and it just uh, leaves the domain, then a new path has to enter from the cap in the row that's just below this layer of gamma i's. So we see that there is a path entering here, moving leftward in the stochastic delta layer, and then it leaves the domain. Also, we note that uh, we, to define a valid probability measure on such models, we need to ensure that the weights are non-negative. Uh, actually, this condition can be satisfied by taking the i to be between these two numbers. You can see that we can we have some choices of Q such that uh, these, uh, these type of the i can be taken. So it actually can define some probability models. And from uh, and from what what uh, from the past interpretation, we can also define a valid stochastic dynamics that is related to uh, our model. Let's look at it here. So there are two uh, paths entering from the left, and so we go from the top to bottom in our sampling process. So in the first step, we need to see where this path will go. So we flip a coin uh, depending on our model parameter to decide whether it, whether it will go downward or rightward. And it turns out to go down, go rightward. And then we flip a coin again, and it goes rightward. 
and rightward and rightward until it reaches the cap. And then deterministically, uh, so in this case, we are uh, showing the, an example for reflecting case. So for reflecting case, it will deterministically be reflected. So we have it here. And then we have to decide again whether it will go downward or leftward because we are on a delta layer. And we flip a coin, and it turns out it goes downward. And these uh, positions can actually be uh, filled in deterministically because we have plus plus, and we can uh, we can sequentially uh, fill in plus here. And so now we have on another gamma layer, and there is a path entering from the left, and then we have to decide again. So this time it moves downward, and these can be filled in deterministically. And so for this path. Uh, it chooses to go downward too. So as a cap, uh, we determinacy feel in a plus because of our uh, choice of cap weights. And finally, uh, this pass, right pass, moves the leftward and leaves the domain, and uh, the left pass just leaves the domain. And this describes a stochastic dynamics for our paths. I also want to mention that uh, this can uh, also gives, give us an interacting particle system uh, because we can also interpret the minus spins that are between the 2n minus t's row and the 2n minus t plus 1's row. So where t is, denotes the time and the time runs from 0, 1 up to 2n. So we view the minus spins between these two horizontal rows as particles at time t. And so from this perspective, it can also be interpreted as follows. So uh, the, the particles will enter from the left, and then particles will jump to the right on each row of stochastic gamma i's, and then it jumps to the left on each row of stochastic delta i's. So let's sh let me show you an example. So uh, from uh, what I have defined, with the, the particle positions, so here is a valid state of our lattice model, and we want to interpret as it as uh, the motion of several particles. Uh, so the particles, uh, the particle locations are determined by those vertical edges. So we have introduced these dashed lines here, and the intersection of those dashed lines with the vertical edges mean uh, de uh, denotes what denotes the particle location. So if it's a plus, then there is no particle there. If it's a minus, then there is a particle there. So let me show you the dynamics here. So at time zero, we have no particles. And then uh, at time one, there will be a particle entering from the left. And then from the past interpretation, it will hit the boundary. So it hits here at time one. And then it will be reflected by the boundary and moves to the left. So it, it uh, turns out it jumps to two uh, units and it arrives here. And then uh, at time t to be three, uh, there will be another particle entering from the left. And uh, so the, this uh, previous particle will jump to the right. Uh, it jumps by one unit, say, and we, uh, so this one is the particle that just arrives. And this one is the previous particle jumping to the right. And finally, the particles will attempt to jump to the left because we are on a, a layer of stochastic gamma delta ice. And so this particle jumps by one and this particle doesn't move. And so this is the output of our interacting particle system. So let me now show you the absorbing and emitting case so in this case, when a particle hits the right boundary, it will directly be absorbed. But if no particle hits the right boundary, one new particle will be emitted from the right boundary. So let me show you the evolution. So we see that at time zero, there is no particle. And at time one, one particle attempts to enter from the left. However, it will hit the wall here and will be absorbed by the wall on the right. So it is absorbed now and we don't have any particle uh, in the next step. So at time t equals two, there will be no particles. And at time t equals three, there will be one particle again for entering from the left-hand side. But then this particle doesn't hit the wall. And so there will, should be one particle entering from the right boundary. Uh, at, for time t equals four. 
And uh, also at 40 equals four, uh, this particle will attempt to jump to the left. So it jumps by one unit and there will be a particle jumping two units from the cap. And so this is our final configuration of the interacting particle system. Okay, having introduced this model, I can say uh, something about its solvability because it's a solvable lattice model. Uh, we definitely need young backs equations. And then I'll show how to derive some functional equations for the partition functions on the interchanging of spectral parameters. So the young backs equation involves uh, one R vertex, which means a rotated vertex and uh, two ordinary vertices. The ordinary vertices can be either gamma and delta. And so uh, for uh, different choices of gamma and delta, we have different choices of R matrices. And it turns out that for any choice, we have an R matrix. So there are four R matrices and we call them stochastic gamma, 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 delta, delta, gamma, and delta, delta i's. So the R matrix should depend on two spectral parameters, the i and the j, that's related to the two ordinary vertices. So here is the young backs equation. So which means that if we fix the boundary spins here, for any for arbitrary fixed boundary spin, and we sum over the three three states in the interior, then the two are equal for any choice of st and for any choice. So here s has to be stochastic x i's and t is stochastic y i's. As I have said, these two are just ordinary vertices, and r should depend on s and t. So if s is x type, y is t is y type then R has to be X, Y type I's with spectral parameters Z, I, and Z, J. So this is a, actually an important tool because it allows us to move this braid to the right-hand side of the lattice. So here is uh, some uh, Boltzmann weights for the R matrices. They are quite uh, complicated, uh, but uh, one thing to note is that for stochastic gamma, gamma I's, uh, we only have uh, these patterns, but for stochastic gamma delta i's, the patterns are different. So it's minus minus, with minus minus, it can output a plus plus, and with plus plus, it can output a minus minus. So it's sort of similar to delta i's, but they are different. And here is delta gamma and delta delta. And we also know that for if we it's if the two X and Y are different, so it's delta gamma, then we allow minus minus two plus plus. And if it's these two are the same, so it's delta delta, and uh, then we don't allow such states. So given the young backs equations, we can derive functional equations that are satisfied by the partition function on the two types of transformations. So one of them will be the because we have n spectral parameters, we can consider two types of two types of transformations that is related to the hyperoctahedral group, uh, which is the Y group for type C, uh, and that's the main reason why our model is related to Cartan type C. So uh, for the for the first uh, uh, n minus one reflections from that group. Uh, it will correspond to the permutations of these parameters Z1 up to Zn. And for the last simple reflection, it corresponds to an interchanging of spectral parameters Zi from Zi to Zi prime minus one. So this is a bit different from the usual Y group action, but it's actually related to that by some change of parameters. And here is the result. Uh, which says that given these two correction factors, uh, the partition function divided by those factors will be invariant under any permutation of Z1 up to Zn and any interchange of Zi between Zi and Zi prime to the inverse. So this is similar to the a usual case of stochastic six vertex models because in, in that case we can uh, Change, it, there is also results about invariance on the permutations of Z1 up to Zn, but there will be one more here, which is the interchange. And so the permit, just if we just consider permutation of Z1 up to Zn, then it's more related to the symmetric group. 
and which is carton type A. And for carton type C, we have to introduce this interchange. So uh, let me uh, say a few words about the derivation of those functional equations. So uh, it is actually uh, depends on two additional relations, which are called the Caduceus relation and the Fish relation. As I have said, the Caduceus relation is the main reason why we have to relate the two types of ice. So we are uh, relating the I prime and the I in a particular way to, so that the Caduceus relation holds and so that, so that it's integrable. So the Caduceus relation roughly says this one. So we call, so A, B, C, D are stochastic gamma, gamma, delta, 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 gamma, and gamma, delta. So we see that there are some paths entering from the left and the A, B, C, D are, de are determined by those paths. And the spectral parameters are all Z, I, and Z, J. And the C is just a constant that doesn't depend on epsilon one up to epsilon four here. So it's just a constant and the main content of the Caduceus relation roughly says that the partition function of the left-hand side divided by the partition function of the right-hand side, which is just two caps, for any epsilon one up to epsilon four, the ratio should be BC. So this is actually important because then we can replace whenever we see a Caduceus braid here, we can replace it by two braids by two uh, caps. So let me show you briefly how we can introduce, so how we can interchange the i and the i plus one. So uh, the idea is that we want to attach a caduceus braid to the left-hand side of the uh, original lattice model. So we have A, B, C, D here. And now let's see what can we get for this caduceus braid. We see that the spin configuration has to be this. Uh, I have already said that for R matrices, depending on different types, there are uh, only uh, for each type there are only six possible cases, and it's it is because of those constraints that we can conclude that the Caduceus braid has to have this uh, configuration here. So plus, minus plus after D has to become minus plus, and after A it has to become minus minus, and so on. So this shows that our original partition function is simply the ratio between this big partition function divided by the partition function determined by this Caduceus braid. But this, the Boltzmann weight explicitly since we only have four of the four products of Boltzmann weight for those R matrices and this can be kept track of. Okay, so the aim of attaching the Caduceus braid is that we want to use this braid, move it to the right in order to switch these two spectral parameters. So let me show you how to do that. So from the young backs equation, we can move those four R matrices to the right. So let's first move C. So originally C is here. And after applying one young backs equation, C will be moved rightward by one unit here. And then we can apply a train argument, that is we apply a sequence of young backs equations to finally remove this C to the right. And those two rows are interchanged. And then we can similarly move the braid to the right in the order of A, B, and D. And finally we get this guy. So we see that we obtain a Caduceus braid on the right-hand side of the configuration. And for any boundary configuration, this can be, uh, can be replaced by a constant times two caps. So the partition function of this whole stuff will be the constant C times the partition function of this guy. But we see that this only differs from our original one by switching these two parameters. Zi and Zi plus one. And this is how we obtain the, the functional equation of the partition function by in, uh, uh, for interchanging Zi and Zi plus one. Since the, uh, since the adjacent transposition I, I plus one, we interchange I and I plus one, that will generate the symmetric group. We see that the partition function, uh, we see how the partition function tra transforms under any action of the symmetric group. 
And another goal will be to interchange Zn and 1 over Zn prime. So the observation here, there is a caveat in that we actually need to change the top row because naively we might want to attach an R matrix, which is gamma delta S to the left-hand side and change it. But there, were, there are some difficulties in that and we have to change the top row to a row of something similar to delta S so that we can use uh, the, uh, an R matrix that's similar to delta delta S so that uh, we can get really get the functional equation. And I'll explain in detail here. So the observation is that on the top boundary, we only have plus spins. And therefore, so originally we have six states for a layer of stochastic gamma ice. But now since we are restricting the top boundary, it has to be plus, plus, plus here. So only three states are allowed. And the bottom weights for these guys are given here. So our next step is to change those vertices. So here is the steps for making the change. In the top row, we are interchanging plus and minus spins. So, uh, so note that the top boundary condition on the left-hand side will be changed to plus since originally it's minus and then we have plus. And we also make a change of bottom width of the top row to the following. We note that this guy is actually similar to delta S but there is a caveat in that D1 is actually, if we have a delta S with D1 is equal to one minus one over the N, but here we have to flip it. And the reason why we are taking uh, the weights to be like this is that we want, uh, if we are restricting the top spin to be plus, we want the new bottom weights for each vertex in the top row to be proportional to the weights of the original one. And we also need to, need to change the caps because uh, previously we have, uh, because in the top row, the spins are switched from plus to minus or from minus to plus. And so we have those new caps for the reflecting case, it's changed to plus minus and minus plus here. And for the other case, it's changed to plus plus and minus minus. So, uh, so here is the motivation for make, for uh, choosing the new weights in the top row like that. And that's because the bottom weights for each vertex in the top row will change by a factor of one over Q times the N. And therefore we have L vertices in the top and the partition function will be scaled simply by the factor of one over Q Z N to the L's power. And so it suffices to study the new system because after that, we can just multiply it by a simple factor. Okay, so now we have a new system and we want to introduce an R matrix to switch the two delta delta i's and to get some functional equation. And so that we have to introduce a new R matrix for the top row and the second top row. We note that the top row is similar to delta S, but there is some difference and the second top row is just a delta S. And it seems interesting that there is also an R matrix for these two types of configurations, which is given here. And the young backs equation still holds. And so S is X and T is a second row vertex. And we have a rotated R matrix that we have just defined and we can move it to the right word using the, uh, and we have shown that this young backs equation holds. And for the R matrix, uh, there is another important relation that's called the Fish relation. Uh, so the Fish relation is roughly says that the combination of an R matrix, which is given here, and a change of the cap, which is given here, is a constant times just a new cap given here for any choice of epsilon one and epsilon two. Uh, but the ratio will be different for our two cases and these are given here. So this is used to, uh, because we want to move an R braid to the right and then we, it will meet a new cap and we want to remove that R braid using this type of fish relation. So let me uh, show you how to do this. So first of all, there is a notation uh, in that we are uh, 
For simplicity, we are denoting V A1 up to D2. Here, the vertices with Boltzmann weights. A1 up to D2, as in the usual notation of six vertex models and eight vertex models. So let's see how we can interchange the two rows. So for the change system, we first attach the new R matrix to the left-hand side. And we know that the Boltzmann weights of the top two rows are given as follows. We note that since for the new R matrix, uh, given plus plus, it has to output a plus plus. And uh, so the, the, this big partition function will be uh, the Boltzmann weights for this R matrix times uh, the original partition function. And so we just need to study this partition function. The next step will be to move the new R matrix to the right using the young backs equation. So we see that again, using a train argument, it moves to the right by one and then, and so on until it moves to the rightmost side. And so these two rows are, the weights for the two rows are interchanged because we have removed moved the R matrix beyond that. And so we see that we reach a fish, uh, fish braid here. And now we can use the fish braid to conclude that this partition function will be a constant times the just a new cap. So using fish relation, we have got this guy. And so this partition function will be further related to the partition function for the changed uh, for the changed system. Uh, and we can because we can change change plus minus spin again and change both the weights and change back the top row to uh, something similar to gamma i's. And uh, finally, we can change it, uh, change it to the system that we want by noting some conditions, which I have, will not de detail here. So we note that after all those changes, we get to a system where on the top, we have gamma i's with one over the m prime. And on the bottom, we have delta i's of one over the m prime. And so this achieves our goal because our goal is to change the n to one over the m prime. And these two are related using, uh, uh, and these two are related simply by some factors of R matrices. And so this uh, gives our functional equation for this interchange. So in the remaining time of this lecture, I will introduce you briefly to a generalization of the simple stochastic symplectic ice model. Uh, in that we can also introduce a feature called a color to the stochastic symplectic ice. So let me show you how I'm introducing the colors to this model. So for uh, previous colored models, uh, colored stochastic vertex models, uh, there are usually n colors, but here there is a difference in that we are actually introducing two n colors and those colors will be signed. In that we have n positive colors called one up to n, and we have n minus colors called n bar up to one bar. So uh, now every edge can carry out a plus spin or one of these two n colors. And we also view the plus spin as color zero. And so now we have minus zero and positive. Uh, so we are ordering naturally the colors by the m bar, so which is similar to minus n, less than minus n minus one up to minus one. And these are less than zero, less than one up to n. So these orders are actually important when we are defining our Boltzmann weights for colored models. Also, uh, we have already said that our model is a type C model. And so, that, uh, so in our model, boundary configuration will involve a new group called the, will, be, will involve a group called the hyperoctahedral group, BN. Uh, so we know that BN is a wire group for type C N root system. And that's why our model will be related to type C. So here is a, a few brief a recap of this hyperoctahedral group. And we have a presentation given here where S1 up to Sn are just the simple reflections for the wire group. And, uh, and, and we note that 
any element sigma from this hyperoctahedral group can be viewed as a permutation of plus minus uh, with those signed colors uh, such that a, a symmetry condition is satisfied in that sigma of minus i will be minus of sigma i. Okay, given these uh, preparations, now we can introduce the colored model. So on the lattice side, uh, everything is almost the same, uh, except that we are changing the ga stochastic gamma and delta i's to colored stochastic gamma and delta i's. So uh, it's just the Boltzmann weights for those i's will be changed, and now every edge will carry plus being plus being or one of the two n colors instead of plus minus in the uncolored model. And the rest are the same. And so we see that the lattice is still this guy. And now we can set up the new boundary data. So there is a one difference in that. Uh, so again, we have a partition lambda one up to lambda n, which specifies uh, some of uh, the colors in the bottom. But the most important one will be, we now have two signed permutations, call them sigma and tau. Uh, that belongs to the hyperoctahedral group that will be used to have the boundary and the bottom boundary. So here is a detailed setup. On the top, again, we have plus spins and we don't change them because the uh, colors are usually used to replace the minus spins. And on the bottom, as usual, uh, the columns labeled lambda i plus m plus one minus i, previously it is assigned a minus spin and now we need to assign color because we want to want it to have be one of the two n colors. And then we say, say we assign color tau i to it. And then the rest of columns are assigned the plus spin as, as before. And on the left hand side, since we have gamma rows and delta rows, so for delta rows, it's still the plus spin. And for gamma rows, uh, it, now it will, since the boundary condition previously is minus, now we have to replace it by a color. So we assign the color sigma i to the left boundary. So here's just a notation for the partition function. So let me show you an example. So it's still on a similar lattice as before. And uh, so the difference is that now we have colors on the left hand side. So we have red and blue entering from the left. And let's say we have red and the minus blue uh, leaving the leaving the domain. So these are the main difference uh, from the uncolored model. And there are also some changes in Boltzmann weights because now we have to specify each vertex depending on the colors it is adjacent to. So there are four colors adjacent to each vertex. And so here though, so here we can intuitively understand the Boltzmann weights by the order of the colors. So the, uh, the rule is that, uh, so if we have, we have two colors, now say we have alpha less than beta, which are two colors, uh, we are viewing the smaller color as a plus and the larger color as a minus. So, and then the weights will be the same as the uncolored case. So here we note that since we have signed colors, there will say we have, if, if we have minus B compared to plus, then minus b is similar to plus in the uncolored model and plus will be similar to a minus in the uncolored model. And that's some difference from uh, usual colored models. And we see that they are still stochastic when we are moving rightward. And again, we have stochastic delta i's and the rest are the same uh, except for the, uh, for the caveats that we just have. And uh, it's still stochastic when we are moving leftward. And for the caps, uh, here is uh, one something important. Uh, when we are cho uh, choosing the choosing the Boltzmann weights for the caps, we, if we have plus entering, then we require that we have plus leaving. But if we have alpha, which is a color from, which is a positive color, we are requiring that the when it's leaving, it has to change its, its color to the opposite. So it changes to alpha bar. And similarly, if it's alpha bar entering, so it's a minus color entering, it has to be changed to a positive color. And those all have Boltzmann weights. And so this intuitively says that when a pass uh, passes through a cap, 
it will change the it will change its color to its opposite. So there is an alternative model. Uh, well, there is uh, there is also an alternative model, and that's also integrable, uh, such that only positive colors are involved. And that in that case, the Boltzmann width uh, for the cap is just uh, from alpha. We go back to alpha, and I refer the it refer to the paper for details uh, because of the time constraints. So uh, as before, uh, we also have a path interpretation. But the difference is just that now we each pass carries has a color, because we have colored because we have colored particles. So, uh, say we have two colored paths entering from the left. So now, uh, let's look at how these two paths are going. So, for the for the red path it moves to the right on the uh, gamma layer, and then it goes down and uh, moves leftward on a delta layer. And for the blue path, it will, it just uh, moves rightward to the uh, right boundary, the cap, and it changes the color to the opposite and uh, moving backward, leftward, and then it leaves the domain. And we can similarly uh, define a colored stochastic dynamics for this model. Which I will just show you the show you the uh, evolution because that's quite similar to the previous uncolored case, except that it has an interaction of colored paths. So here there is an interaction of colored paths, and then it grows and leaves the domain. And again, we can interpret this as an interacting particle system with the difference that the the each particle will carry a color and the uh, so the, when when each part, when a particle is reflected on the right boundary, it will change the color to the opposite. So I just uh, show you an evolution from this state. So there is a particle red particle entering from the left, and on the delta layer it jumps to the left, and there is a blue color entering from the left, and uh, so we have to determine when these two colors are interacting. Uh, it will, they will either switch color or not switch the color. And in our realization, it turns out that the blue color and the red color, the, these two particles switch color, and it's the blue color that will enter the right boundary and the red color will stay the same. And then they jump to the left and leave the domain. And this is the final configuration. Uh, so due to time constraints, I will just uh, mention briefly about the solvability structure of those colored models. So uh, an important note is that uh, for a colored model, there are only three sets of young baxter equations instead of the four sets that we previously have. And so the, the pair that we, are, uh, that we are missing is the gamma delta i's. And so we only have three sets of young Baxter equations. So here x, y uh, denotes the uh, types of s and t here. Those are ordinary vertices. And uh, so these types are restricted to these three classes. And we still have the young Baxter equation. And there will be some Boltzmann weights uh, for R matrices, which are obtained uh, as in the previous rule I have said that is interpreting the smaller color as a plus and the larger color as minus. And these are the same as the uncolored case. So another integrability result for the colored stochastic uh, vertex model is uh, for this colored stochastic symplectic ice is that uh, we have a reflection equation the reason we are resorting to reflection equation is that uh, we don't have a stochastic gamma delta s, so we can hope for using the Caduceus relation as we use for the uncolored case. And so now we only have the reflection equation where we see that uh, on the left hand side, this braid goes upward and then it's reflected and move, goes downward here. And so the uh, when we are using reflection equation, the types of those lines are gamma, gamma, and delta, delta. And therefore, 
uh, the R matrices are of those types. So note that the spectral parameters are switched in these two cases for those eyes. Finally, I will say a few words about the partition function of those models. Uh, so, uh, so as in uh, as in other colored stochastic vertex models, we first need to evaluate the partition function as a ground state, uh, and then uh, and then the goal is to uh, you, uh, derive some recursive relations, uh, and uh, equipped with these two tools, we can compute any type of partition function because we can start from a ground state partition function where ground state means uh, when the boundary condition satisfies certain conditions such that the partition function can be computed easily. And uh, then using recursive relation for the uh, applying it to the ground state, we can get to the uh, partition function of any boundary condition. And uh, here is the ground state condition, which says that when sigma i is minus tau i for every i, then there is a unique admissible state. And the partition function can be evaluated if explicitly. So let me show you uh, the ground state partition function. So the unique uh, admissible state will be that for each, for each color pass, it goes to the right, uh, moving across, bending towards left after moving through the cap and then leaves the domain and uh, for and then here it's also bends towards the cap and moves leftward and uh, goes straight downward and leaves the domain. And it can be checked that this is the unique admissible state for uh, this type of boundary condition. We see that these two are opposite to each other and these two are opposite to each other. And uh, there are also two recursive relations. Uh, similar, uh, they are similar to the uh, to the uncolored case in that we have, first we have adjacent transposition case. So here we see that we let SI to be I and the transposition of I, I plus one, and assume that the color at I plus one's row is bigger than the color at I's, gamma I's row. And then we can derive this recursive relation. And the main thing to note is that we are relating the partition function when the left color is changed when the left i's color and the left i plus one's color is changed. So we have composite sigma with si here on the left hand side. And we can write it as a linear combination of two terms. The one term is that we don't make any change. And the other, cha other term is that we switch the i and the i plus one in the spectral parameter. So the proof of, of this recursive relation will be dependent on uh, both the young backs equation and the reflection equation. So I will not detail on that in this talk, but I have uh, I have attached some slides after the after uh, after what I will talk about, and you can uh, if you are interested, you might look at that. Look at that. There will be a few pictures uh, showing why this recursive relation can be derived. As a previous case, we also need to switch the uh, switch one spectral parameter from the n to the n prime, one over the n prime. And uh, we also need uh, another case is we want to switch the nth color to its opposite. So here is the theorem, which says that if the color at the top row, at the top uh, gamma top row, which is a row of colored gamma i's, uh, the, the sign of that color, we uh, require that the sign of that color is positive. And then we study the recursive relation when we change that color to the opposite. So now we have a negative color on the left-hand side, which is the partition function on the left-hand side. And again, it's related to two terms, the linear combination of two terms. One term, we don't do anything. And the other term, we change the spectral parameter. We change the last guy to one over the n prime. So these recursive relations uh, are closely related to type C. Uh, so uh, in, in particular, they have connection to uh, the so-called de Maizot-Lustig operators of type C. So let me explain this connection. So first of all, we have 
n parameters u1 up to un, and f of u is a rational function of u. And the action of simple reflection si on u is just to switch the two parameters at position i and i plus one. And uh, so the last simple reflection acts on u by changing u n to one over u n. And then we can define this, uh, these actions on rational functions too. And so the de Mazur-Lustig operator of type C is given by this shape. So it can be seen as an operator acting on a rational function f, and it can be written as two terms. Uh, one term uh, is just f, and the other term is, uh, is f acted on by si. So we see that we have already encountered this type of structure in our rela recursive relations, because in that recursive relation, in one case, we just have the original one. And in the other case, we are just uh, use uh, some reflection on the uh, some transformation on the spectral parameters. And uh, of course, there are n of the, those operators corresponding to n simple rules for type C. And we also let this small slight variant of the de Mazur-Lustig operators. So the main connection is given as follows. So we first make a change of variables ui. So ui and zi are related in this way. And we also uh, collect some correction factors and give, which gives a new partition function. So s is the old one and sm tilde is a new one. And so the recursive relation will be translated into this guy. So uh, uh, under, under changing the, uh, the interchanging the color at the i one and the i plus one and the, the i plus one's position, uh, it will be given by this uh, change the de Mazur-Lustig operator acting on the original partition function. And uh, as for the last uh, Y group action as n, it will be given by minus times the action of the original uh, de Mazur-Lustig operator acting on the partition original partition function. And so this explains why our model is type C because it's related to de Mazur-Lustig operators of type C. And uh, this concludes my talk today. Thank you so much, Chenyang. Let's thank the speaker. Okay, this time I will not forget to stop recording because the last time we recorded 30 minutes of discussion.